OK, so we're going to look at powers of 2 and 3. So now there are some powers of 2 and 3 which are very close to each other. For example, 2 cubed is only 1 away from 3 squared, and 2 squared is only 1 away from 3 to the power of 1, and then 2 and 3 both to the power of 1. They're both within 1 of each other. Then also if we allow 3 to the power of 0, 1, this is also just 1 away from 2 to the power of 1. So there are quite a few examples of powers of 2 and 3 that are 1 away from each other. The only way of making them equal to each other would be taking them both to the power of 0 so that they're equal to 1, because otherwise your powers of 2 are even, whereas your powers of 3 are all odd. So I'm interested in trying to find more examples of powers of 2 and 3 that are only 1 apart. If you look at some larger powers of 2 and 3, they seem to be much more spread out. So we can form this as an equation that we'll try and solve. So the modulus of 3 to the n minus 2 to the power of m is equal to 1, where n and m we want to be non-negative integers. So really, with a modulus equation, we can write this as two different equations. One is where our power of 2 is bigger than our power of 3, and there'll be another case where our power of 3 is bigger than our power of 2. So we're essentially looking for positive or non-negative integer solutions to each of these two equations. And to get started on solving this equation, there's actually quite a neat insight using modular arithmetic. So if you were to consider all of your powers of 2, let's say we consider them all modulo 4, so what's their remainder when you divide by 4? Well actually all of your powers of 2 are multiples of 4, except for 1 and 2, so everything from 4 and above is a multiple of 4, so it would be equivalent to 0 modulo 4. If you wanted to look at all of your powers of 2 modulo 8, then all of them would have to be equivalent to 0 modulo 8, except for 1, 2, and 4. So other than a few special cases, we can say that 2 to the m has to be equivalent to 0 modulo 4. So we'll explore this now by looking at 3 to the n plus 1 and 3 to the n minus 1 mod 4 and see if this matches up with our powers of 2, which have to be equivalent to 0 mod 4. So 3 to the m mod 4, when n is 0, it's just 1. When n is 1, it's 3 to the power of 1 is 3. When n is 2, 3 squared is 9, but 9 mod 4 gets us back down to 1. Then we multiply by 3 again, 27 mod 4 is equivalent to 3. And the pattern continues like this, 1, 3, 1, 3. So this tells us then, just breaking it up into smaller steps, 3 to the n plus 1 goes 2, 0, 2, 0, repeating like this. Whereas 3 to the n minus 1 goes 0, 2, 0, 2 and so on. So now we can use this insight that let's say we've got 2 to the m is equivalent to 2 modulo 4. Well we know that this holds if and only if the only possibility of getting a remainder of 2 when we divide by 4 is if 2 to the m is actually equal to 2. So here m has to be equal to 1. So now this is really useful because all of these cases here where we get the 2s these only work if 3 to the n plus 1 or 3 to the n minus 1 is actually equal to 2. So we can make this work here and here, but all of these other cases get ruled out. So you can see for 3 to the n plus 1, we can rule out all of the remaining even powers of n, and here we can rule out all the remaining odd powers of n, other than these special cases. So let's just write then 3 to the n plus 1, where n is even, the only possible solution here is this one, where 3 to the 0 plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 1. So this is m is equal to 1, and n, our power of 3, is equal to 0. And that's the only possible case. So here we've covered a quarter of all our possibilities, 3 to the n plus 1 and n even. If we had 3 to the n minus 1 was equal to our power of 2, then the only possibility where n is odd now, we rule out all of our remaining odd powers, so the only possibility that works here is 3 to the 1 minus 1 is equal to 2 to the 1, corresponding to this case here. So this is m is 1 again, but now n equals 1. So we've covered half of all of our possibilities here, 3 to the n plus 1, 3 to the n minus 1, where n is even and where n is odd, respectively. So now we'll consider things modulo 8 and see if we can rule out some more possibilities. Our powers of 3 modulo 8 actually look very similar to how they looked modulo 4. So 3 to the 0 is just 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, which is equivalent to 1 modulo 8. Then we multiply by 3 again, 27 is equivalent to 3 modulo 8, and it repeats just like this. So now our 3 to the n plus 1 goes 2, 4, 2, 4, 
repeating modulo 8, whereas 3 to the n minus 1 goes 0, 2, 0, 2, just like before modulo 8. So now we're interested in 3 to the n plus 1. We've ruled out all the cases where n is even, so we only care about the n odd cases. So here you get 4, 4, 4. So all of our 3 to the n plus 1 has to be equivalent to 4 modulo 8. And remember, the whole point is that 3 to the n plus 1 is equal to 2 to the m. So 2 to the m, this is equivalent to 4 mod 8. Of course, this is true if and only if 2 to the m is actually equal to 4, because any larger power of 2 is just going to be a multiple of 8. So this is if and only if 2 to the m equals 4, i.e. m is equal to 2. So this tells us then that other than one very special case here, all of our larger odd powers of n, 3 to the n plus 1, isn't going to be equal to 2 to the power of m for any integer n. So here it works when n is 1, so we get for 3 to the n plus 1 where n is now odd, the only possible case is where n is 1, so 3 to the 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 squared, so here you have m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1 for this special case. But this is the only possibility then for 3 to the n plus 1 being equal to 2 to the m. So all we're left now with, because we've ruled out the case where n is odd or n even, all we're left now is the case where n is even for our second equation. But unfortunately for our second equation, when n is even, we still get 0, 0, 0. So 3 to the m minus 1, nothing's ruled out here. It's still a multiple of 8, unfortunately. We could try higher powers of 2, but this doesn't seem to yield anything for other values. But there's a nice trick we can use here, because we're, we've got n is even, so 3 to the n minus 1, where n is even, we can write as 3 to the 2 times k minus 1. Then we can use the difference of 2 squares identity to write this as 3 to the k plus 1 times 3 to the k minus 1. So then we'll use this factorization to try and rule out some more cases now. So now we've got two factors of 2 to the power of m. And the next thing to notice is that 2 to the power of m, any power of 2, all of its factors have to be themselves powers of 2, or perhaps they're just equal to 1. You can think of this in terms of the prime factorization of 2 to the m. This is just made up of 2s. So any factor of 2 to the m has to itself just be made up of 2s. So you couldn't get something like 3, 5, 6 going into 2 to the power of m. So this tells us then that both 3k plus 1 and 3k minus 1 actually themselves have to be powers of 2, or potentially equal to 1. And this is really useful now, because 3 to the k plus 1, 3 to the k minus 1, we can apply our argument modulo 4 to each of these, because they are effectively both going to be powers of 2, unless they're equal to 1. So we know that our powers of 2 modulo 4 are essentially all equivalent to 0, they're all mu multiples of 4, with the two exceptions of 1 and 2. So this tells us then that 3 to the k plus 1 and 3 to the k minus 1, if we want to have loads of different possible solutions, we would want both of these to be multiples of 4. But you can see that this isn't going to be possible, because there's actually only a difference of 2 between these two numbers. And your multiples of 4, they have to be either equal or differ by a multiple of 4. You can't have two multiples of 4 that are two apart. So this tells us then that at least one of these, or exactly one of these, is going to be not a multiple of 4. So we can say that 3 to the k plus 1 is equal to 1 or 2, or we've got the possibility that 3 to the k minus 1 is equal to 1 or 2. So now 3 to the k plus 1 and 3 to the k minus 1, you can easily see there that they're actually both going to be an even number, because it's an odd plus an odd, so we can actually rule out the 1 cases. So it's either 3 to the k plus 1 equals 2, or 3 to the k minus 1 equals 2. So in this first case we get a solution where k is 0, and in the second case we get a solution where k is 1. And we can actually rule out any larger values of k, because we need to have one of these equal to 1 or 2, so we only, we're only limited to very small values of k. And don't forget, we're actually interested in 3 to the n minus 1 being equal to our power of 2. So remember, n is equal to 2k, so here n would be 0, and here n would be 2. So our 3 to the n minus 1 becomes just 3 to the 0 minus 1, which is equal to 2 to the 1. So this is actually just a repeat of our m equals 1, n equals 0 solution from before. So unfortunately we don't get anything new 
in this first case. But in the second case where k was 1, so n is 2, our 3 to the n minus 1 becomes 3 squared minus 1, so 9 minus 1, which is 8, or 2 to the power of 3. So we get a new solution here, m is 3, n is 2. So then we've got four solutions in total, which are actually the four that we had at the beginning. And we've already ruled out this 3 to the n plus 1 equals 2 to the m in both n, even, and odd cases. And we've already ruled out 3 to the n minus 1 is our power of 2 when n was odd. And we've seen when n is even for the second equation, we can only work with very small values of k because we need to have one of these needs to be not a multiple of 4. So we only get the one extra solution here. So we really have covered all the different possibilities. So unfortunately, there aren't any more values for powers of 2 and powers of 3 that are one apart other than the four we had in the beginning.